and then I figure out, I take each sentence and I turn it into an equation. And the first one, it said that the cost of the washer or the cost of the dryer was $1,500. Then the second sentence said that the washer costs 200 more than the dryer. I know that 200 more means I'm adding 200 to something, and that something was the cost of the dryer. What does this equal? The cost of the washer. So now I have two equations, and then I can go ahead and solve. In this case, because I already have the W separated, I'm going to use the substitution method where I plug in the value of W based on its equivalency to D in place of the W. So I have D plus 200 plus D equals 1500. So then I have a D here and a D here. This paragraph, I like to put, not paragraph, parentheses, I like to put those in so that I'm showing this is one value, this is the second value. This really isn't affecting anything, so I can ignore it. I have a D and a D. So I have 2D plus 200 equals 1500. So if I take away 200 from each side, that leaves me with twice the cost of the dryer is $1,300. So if I divide both sides by two, the dryer is going to be $650. So if the dryer is $650, then if I plug that into this equation, well actually I can go th here, 200, uh, 650 plus 200 is, the washer is going to be 850. Now that I have defined what my variables are representing, I can create a system out of the information I'm given. It says that a particular computer takes 43 nanoseconds. So it's giving me the total amount of time it takes to do something. And the 43 seconds is for five sums, so five x's, and seven products, so seven why? This is my equation for the first set of information I'm given. And then it says it takes 33 nanoseconds, or I'm sorry, 36 nanoseconds to carry out four sums and six products. All right, so now that I have a system, I, in this case, because I have a, a coefficient in front of each of my variables, I need to, the, the elimination method is going to be the easiest. I need to find out which one of these is going to be the easiest to eliminate. I'm going to go with my x's, my leading variable, and my lowest common denominator, or my lowest common multiple is going to be 20. And I need one of those 20s to be positive and one to be negative. So my top equation needs to get multiplied by 4. My bottom one needs to get multiplied by a negative 5. So when I combine my like terms, the x's zero out. Positive 28 and negative 30 leaves me with negative 2y. And 172 and negative 180, I have to find the difference of them because they're different signs. The difference is 8, and that 8 is negative because my negative number was bigger. Negative divided by negative turns into a positive. So negative 2 divided by negative 2y equals 4. So it takes 4 seconds per product. Okay, so now that means I need to figure out how much time how much time it takes to do a sum. I can go to either one of my original equations or I can go to one of my modified equations. It really doesn't matter. I like to go to the original because then my numbers are smaller. I'm just going to go ahead and go with the top one. 5x plus 7 times y and y is 4 equals 43. So 5x plus 28 equals 43. When I take the 28 away, I'm not good at mental math, so I have to actually work this all out by hand, is 5, 15. So 5x equals 15, and when I divide 5 off of both sides, I'm left with 3. So x is 3. My third story problem says two angles are supplementary if the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. So I know uh, in this story, I'm dealing with two unknown angles. So I can say x represents angle one, and this slanted half triangle L whatever is the abbreviation for an angle, and y equals angle two, okay? So I know that angle one and angle two add up to a total of 180 degrees. 
So x plus y equals 180 because they're supplementary angles, which means they add up to 180. The second thing that tells me one angle's measure is 90 degrees more than twice the other angle. So one degree, it doesn't matter which one I use, is 90 degrees more. So because it's saying it's more than something, that 90 has to come second, twice the value of the first one. Oh, doubling up on my variables. More than 90 degrees, 90 degrees more than twice the other angle. So now I have a system. Because one variable is all already isolated, the substitution method is going to be best. I take this, I plug it in for x, 2y plus 90, which is x's value, plus another y equals 180. When I combine like terms, I get 3y plus 90 equals 180. I take away 90. I'm left with 90. So 3 times something equals 90. When I divide by 3, I get y equals 30 degrees, okay? So I know that 30 plus something gets me 180. Well, that's going to be 150. We'll have x equal Arla's Arla's wage per hour, and y can be Cal's hourly rate, which is more efficient than the first one. Okay, so I know that each of them worked 40 hours in the first week. Well, how do we figure out how much somebody earns? We take the number of hours they work and multiply it by how much they earn per hour. So 40, 40 hours at Arla's wage plus 40 hours at Cal's wage gets us $1,300. Now the second week, they didn't work as much, and so Arla worked 20 hours, and Cal worked 16 at their rate, and in doing so, they earned a combined $580. Now because I have coefficients in front of all of my variables, the elimination method is going to be easiest. 40 and 20 is going to be the easiest one to eliminate because 20 can turn into a 40. So I need to multiply this. X's go away. 40 and negative 32 leaves with 8Y and 1300 minus 1060, 0, 2, 4, 140. So I need to now divide 8 off of both sides, 140 divided by 8 gives me 1 and 6, and 8 into 60 is 7 for 56, and I still have some there, so that leaves me with 40, 8 into 40 is 0.5, so $17.50 for Cal's hourly wage. Okay, so now I have to figure out what Arla makes. Uh, and I can plug that into any one of these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just go with this top one here. So 40 times 17.5. Let me get my handy dandy calculator to make my, my life easier. 17.5. $700. So this is $700 that I take away from $1,300 means $600. So 40x plus $700 equals $1,300. So 40x equals $600. When I divide everything by 40, I know it's a little messy, I get 15. So, Arla's hourly wage is $15 per hour, Cal's is $17.50. Now the last story problem is dealing with loans and interest. Anytime you have a story problem that involves a percent, you should know two things. One, that percent has to be converted to its decimal value. The second thing is that percent has to be being multiplied by some 
original amount or whole number. That percent can't just stand on its own. Otherwise, if it was 15%, that represents 0.15, which is 15 cents. 15 cents doesn't make much of an impact. It has to be 15 cents out of every dollar. So 0.15 times whatever the whole amount or original amount is. So the story problem says that Samantha took out two loans totaling $6,000. So we'll make X be loan one, Y is loan two, okay? And I know that the combination of the two loans gives me $6,000. Now what else do I know about those loans? It says that she borrowed the maximum amount she could at three and a half simple annual interest. So we can go ahead and have that just be the first loan. I have to take 3.5 percent and convert it to a decimal, which means I move the decimal two to the left. One, two. So that is 0 0.035 of X plus, so the second loan was at seven percent, which means I go one, two, fill in a zero, plus 0 0.07 of Y, and the total interest paid uh, or that she owed was going to be 259 So we have a couple of options of things we can do. One is we can clear the decimal. If we see this equation, and I have all these decimal values, I don't want to work with them. What I can do is multiply the entire equation by my largest decimal place value. I have one, two, three, so I'm in the thousands position. So if I multiply this entire thing by 1,000, it lets me move my decimal place over three places, so I'm not having to work with any decimal values. So if I go one, two, three, I now have 35x. One, two, three, I gotta move over, I get 70y, and if it's here, one, two, three, I then get 259,000, okay? So now that I have this, this is not going to just cancel out. So I'm going to have to multiply this by something. I'm going to multiply it by a negative 35 so that I can get rid of my leading x variable. Negative 35 times x, negative 35x. Now I have opposites that are going to cancel out. Negative 35 times y is negative 35y. And 6,000 times 35, I need my calculator for this. Six, one, two, three times 35 is, and it's going to be negative because the negative times the positive, negative 210,000. So when I do that, x's cancel out. 70 minus 35 leaves me with 35y, and the difference of that is going to be 49,000. So that when I divide both sides, by 35, I get $1,400. So for Y, my loan amount is going to be $1,400. If I plug that into X plus Y equals 6,000, I have to take 1,400 away from 6,000, so if I go 6,000 minus 1,400, I get 4,600. 